So, um, right, good afternoon. Sorry, it's been a long time. Um, haven't managed to do anything over the last few weeks. Lots going on in the Stringer household. Um, but first of all, hello again, Noel. Um, welcome, welcome, Noel Lee, back from Calibre. Um, Thank you. For our quarterly catch up. Um, he's been a really, really busy boy. So uh, I'm going to help hand over to Noel and uh, see if he can give us a bit of an update of what's been going on in the world of Calibre Wings and uh, Diecast Aircraft. All right, thanks, uh, Mark. Um, good to be back with you guys on on this uh, chat. Um, just a bit of a recap since um, Wonder Festival, right? So we were uh, busy um, putting up the samples together for the for the show, uh, especially the elevator, um, as well as the F sixteen uh, samples. So now that we've gone through that. Uh, basically, the, the team is back to uh, fulfilling the rest of the year's production, which is including uh, the F-16's uh, delivery by the end of December. So it. it looks um, fantastic, mate. I've got to say, I mean, I know you was you was talking to me about the the paint and how difficult it was to sort of assume what the Hellenic Air Force example was, but yeah. it looks. It looks the part, mate, and you know it's uh, certainly taking diecast aircraft in, uh, that sort of next stage of development. You know, I think the removable engine is just a cracking idea, and now you've gone about it and designed it and overcome hurdles. It, I mean, it's going to look fantastic. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, um, um, we, basically that was it. Uh, uh, besides that, we, we we cleared up all the F fourteen uh, backlog from from years before. So this year we're on a clean state for the next releases. Um, as well as the S2 tracker that is uh, is that is pretty much uh, in progress. Uh, we will be giving you guys a look at the first test shot, hopefully by the end of this month or early okay. next month. And uh, if things go well, we could push it out um, just by the new year. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Has that been quite a difficult one to sort of overcome because of all the different variations in, in the tracker? um not exactly but uh you know we 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 picked up uh the knowledge pretty fast on this one we realized that there were two uh different fuselage lengths on the tracker and of course a big shout out to uh, a big contributor dan smith who has helped us uh with uh, the the research and um development of the tracker itself so big kudos out to dan uh he will surely be credited on our packaging and it was it's with it's with Dan's help that I was able to get some uh, pressure off my plate uh, in terms of going into the in-depth uh, details of this aircraft. Yeah, I know. I know Dan from the forums and Facebook, and you know he's he's all over diecast. Uh, and it's people like him, and that's that's what's really really key is that it's a different as the dogs go off on one there. Um, it's really really key that people like that are involved because they know they know their stuff, you know. Um, I don't want. I was going to use a, a swear word then, but I'll keep it professional. Um, but he know he knows the ins and outs of everything, and and it's really important that people are in do get a bit of a voice. And we've seen instances over the last few weeks and months where diecast manufacturers have, have offered stuff up, um, people have given feedback, and it's just been completely ignored. And then the product comes out and it's substandard. So now it's really cool that you're involving someone like Dan who, who really really knows his stuff in in this area of uh, of aviation and whatnot but um no it's great to hear um have you uh, decided on the first release yet or is that all, all going to be a surprise and i don't want to spoil it um yeah we have already decided on on the first uh, wave uh there will be a short fuse sludge and a long fuse sludge and the schemes have already been selected we will be announcing it uh officially in the, in the coming month fantastic cool yeah. cool so talk a little bit more about wonder festival what uh, is it the first time you've done that um, actual festival over? Is it Shanghai, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, uh, first time in Shanghai. And, um, you know, Wonder Festival is something that is uh, more to the animation uh, side, uh, more more than military. Although in the J Japanese ones, uh, you get a lot of uh, sculptors and artists who mix a resin a rendition of aircraft that's not already done. So, for example, we you know a few years back i saw the f-16 xl as a resin piece at wonder festival so you know you you get lots of uh, different creators who, who, who do really fantastic stuff even miniature one i don't know one 200 scale or, or smaller um, tanks and stuff 
uh, one four 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 scale World War Two aircraft and stuff like that. So, yeah, one of the festival is it, it's a uh, it's a uh, you know full of uh, creativity. Uh, the Shanghai one is uh, no exception, but of course, there's much less military uh, at the Shanghai event. But certainly worth your while, though. Did you get any uh, sort uh, yeah. of pre-orders out of it? Yeah. Yeah, it was really nice to um, have a meet and greet with the local Chinese fans of Caliber. Uh, they came up to the booth, uh, well, the table, and, uh, you know, nice to have a meet and greet. Uh, nice to hear their appreciation of how we are making the die-cast models. Uh, most of them were impressed with the F-16 and, of course, as well as the elevator project. Uh, the elevator looks fantastic. I have to say, it looks brilliant. And I think in this day and age, I don't know, I don't know what it's like over in Asia, but we used to have um, a big model company over here called Model Zone, and they went out of business. And that was the only time, really, with the exception of air shows, toy fairs, and the occasional market store, or whatever, where you'd get to go into a place and have a look and touch and feel them and and get a, a look up close. Otherwise, now it's pretty much all online. So it's especially in twenty twenty. I mean everyone's been cooped up for so long and China's probably one of the worst hit of it. I suppose it's a good opportunity for people to get out and see stuff. Uh, and of course, also you've got your passing trade as well. People who'd never really maybe experienced Calibre, who'd, who'd, who'd watched Top Gun as a kid, uh, and then suddenly they could own a model of uh, Maverick and Goose's aircraft. You know, it's a, it's a good opportunity to get up close and see them. Um, so is it something you're going to be looking to do more often in terms of like uh, different sort of, I would say, shows as such is that something you're looking to get out there and do uh most definitely will be uh entering the next wonder festival in shanghai that will be in june uh 13 and 14 on the weekend uh, next year uh so besides that uh we sh we are also keen to explore uh various uh shows in europe and one in malaysia particularly uh, it's one that's focused on skill models. But of course, we will see how the COVID situation improves to allow us to travel overseas. And of course, you've got to get a visit into London at some point as well. Yeah, definitely. I'll take, I'll, if, if we can, I'll take you over West Ham if you come over. I don't have to mm. start, start to put you off, to be honest with you. <laughs> okay. Okay. But, no, it, yeah, that'd be great to see you out and about. And again, you know, it's different different markets, different people, um, especially like toy fairs and that have got you no know, real sort of die cut, uh, a die cast and die hard following. And um, you now I used to go to a little toy fair up the road to me at Brentwood. Um, it's not quite as big as it used to, but it, it was one or two stalls there, which always I sort of, you know, absolutely go to. Um, but it's yes, again, you know, it's passing trade and stuff like that. All, all it takes is I can testify after only 1,200 or so models, all it takes is for one. You get one and that's it. You're on a slippery slope. So uh, no, it's a good opportunity to get out there as well. But that's great. So in terms of um, talking about your release schedule, what else is there to come out the end of uh, 2020? All right. So the end of 2020 is just um, two and a half months away. Uh, we are definitely going to put Thankfully. out the wave three. <laughs> yeah. The wave three fences. All right. Um, will will come up before the end of the year as well as the F-16s. Um, so I guess uh, for this remaining two and a half months, these are the four models that you expect uh, to be out. Uh, you're going to be a busy boy then over the next few weeks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, not to mention um, the other two um, TP models, the Top Gun models, yeah. Uh, they look great, mate. They look fantastic. I know, obviously, for, for those who don't know on the page, Dan is due to receive um, a copy of an F-14 very, very soon, very, very shortly. He keeps sending me daily tracking information of it to, to say where it is. He's, he's, he's turned into a six-year-old kid again. He's that excited about it coming. Um, so expect to see right. a, a pretty detailed review up on the page over the coming weeks. But I have to say, no, looking at the pictures, um, it looks absolutely brilliant. And it's, um, you know... It's something that if you if you watch that film, what in nineteen eighty six, I think it was, wasn't it? Top Gun. Um, mm -hmm, no, it's mm -hmm. and anybody around about my age will be looking at that and licking their lips with excitement. Um, is there any plans um, to do anything else alongside that Top Gun uh, F fourteen? Is, is that going to be a standalone one off? Do you think? Um, I guess in terms of uh, pop culture, that is currently the only uh, one off. We'll be focusing back on um, actual military uh, subjects. 
Okay. Now it's great though. Is at the end of the day, like, and, uh, just to reiterate, it looks absolutely brilliant. And you know, looking at the feedback from everybody out there who's who was expecting one or has received one, you know, it's been really, really favourable. So now it's great news for you guys as well, isn't it? And uh, I know, obviously, with you know when we first spoke about you know moving factories and stuff like that, I'm guessing that's helped now, and you're really steamrolling ahead uh, despite everything that's been going on. So it's great news for you, but not so much great on the sleep front, I guess. In terms of uh, actually nope. getting your rest. Uh, every day is, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's not enough hours every day because the factory starts work at, at 8, uh, finishes at about 10. In between, there's a break of, of uh, 12 o'clock, 12 noon to 1.30. Uh, and then there's a dinner break from 5.30 to 6. So, um, yeah, so in between those is all work. And I get to the factory wow. at about somewhere 9-ish, 10 sometimes. Um, and then uh, I finish up. Finish at the same time at ten, and then I get back to rest. Uh, not really rest because you, when you get back, you get to see all your, your emails and stuff. So it's uh, you say yeah, it's, rest. it's kind of challenging. And, and for, so that's why I had to. <laughs> well, you say rest. Um, for everybody, yeah. else, I've got Noel as a friend on Facebook, and I'll tune in at like sort of seven or eight o'clock at night to have a look on Messenger, and Noel will be a little green tick next to his name to say he's still awake, and it's about three or four o'clock in the morning over in Shenzhen. Uh, which, <laughs> I, like, I was like, does this man ever sleep? You know, I, I don't know how you manage to fit it all into um, seven days a week and just 24 hours a day. You know, it, it, you're incredibly busy, but it says a lot for you about the passion for your brand and the passion for what you do. Uh, and I guess, you know, you get good and bad days, but to be able to do something you really, really enjoy, I suppose that does give you a big kick at times. Yeah, um, that... I have to comment about that, Mark, because uh, when you are in the zone, when you are in the zone and you're making the models, when you're seeing the test shot being out, you are seeing the samples, you're selecting the colors, you want it to, to, to be completed so they can see the final product as and when. Uh, so when you're in the zone, uh, you, you, you just can't wait for the next day to come or the next step of the process to be completed. Um, and then when you are in a bit of a, li, a, a, a lull period, as you call it, um, then, you know, when things cool down, it's hard to get back on track. So it's always good to be in the momentum. Um, so, but at the same time, yeah, I, I do get burned out sometimes. Uh, and when I get burned out uh, for maybe uh, two or three days, I can't really be at the same pace in terms of the work. So I get a rest and then I come back on uh, to get on the same momentum again. So that's that's what it is. No, absolutely. No. And of course, it's everything that comes out is is your name it's got your name on it it's got your your personality on it isn't it so i, I guess you know from that point of view i work for a big corporation well not really a corporation it's, it's not a plc but um the cooperative society but um you know everything isn't doesn't necessarily have my name on it um and i'm not saying that i don't put in the extra effort because i work hard but if it's your own business like i said it's you know you get it wrong the consequences are, are massive aren't they um well, the thing is that you will never get it right. That's the thing with production. Um, I guess even uh, the most avid of uh, Apple fans would probably sometimes in their lifetime get a faulty iPhone. So um, it's hard to have everything functioning in a, in a perfect world, uh, but we always do our best to make sure it is as close to perfection as possible. Absolutely. That, but, and the thing is, there, I don't think there is any such thing as perfect, perfection because perfection evolves, doesn't it? You reach <laughs> it and then there's something else. So, you know, it, yeah. um, you know as, as soon as someone runs 9.7 in a 100 metre race, someone will be looking to run 9.69. You know, and that's, mm. where, you know, it, that, that's exactly the way life is, isn't it? But no, I yeah. mean, like, looking at your content that you released this year, you're absolutely nailing it and you know, going from strength to strength. So, Fantastic, um, fantastic news in that part. So just to go over, obviously, the other project, we, we spoke about the F-16 uh, and the uh, the Grumman trackers. I'll say trackers because mm -hmm. obviously there's multiple yep. versions of it. Yep. The other one we, we sort of slipped over is the U-2. Uh, how's that progressing? All right, for the U-2, um, I decided to uh, take a step back and make sure that uh, we get we are getting the shape and all the details done uh, to the T. Again, with this project, I'm getting some help from somebody who remains, who prefers to remain anonymous. Uh, so we are making sure that we are going to take our time a bit more on, on the shape for the U2. Because to me, 
uh, and I guess to everybody who's concerned of the U2, the shape is everything. So because of the fact there is no actual model kit of the U2 make that is accurate to this point in time, uh, you know, there is no clear reference, nothing that you can just uh, copy and improve on. The U2, I can tell you, is something that we're doing from scratch. So we are using a lot of photographs, um, of course, uh, the very limited uh, schematics available online, mostly photographs, and how we would mesh the shape of the U2, especially the belly, which uh, is not really very prominent in, in photographs. And we will try to give you guys, you know, the best looking U2 that, that can be on a 2 scale. So it's going to take some time. And I guess the wind length as well is going to be a challenge in die cast and how you sort of get around that. And of course, naturally with that, it's got um, removable undercarriage on the wing tips as well, which I guess is going to be another challenge to how you go about that. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, it's something that lots of people are really, really excited about. And uh, you know, not to give too much kudos to any of your competitors. And there was another a competitor announcement after you announced what you was doing. Uh, but they've obviously fallen into issues as well in terms of their release schedule for it. So I don't think you're going to be alone, but I, I, I know from what's going to come out from Calibre that it's going to be top notch. We will do our best, definitely. Fantastic. Cool. Are there any other projects that, without obviously giving too much away, because I know it's a competitive world in the world of model uh, making, is there anything else you're looking at after, I guess there's something else after the, the tracker as well, isn't there? Not to give too much away, of course. Well, we'll have to, we'll have to keep that under the wraps, uh, but we have definitely a, a plan in the pipeline. Uh, basically, every year we look to put out at least two new toolings. So that could be something that wow. we can uh, disclose. Uh, other than that, uh, we like to keep things, uh, you know, close to the chest <laughs> this time around. Yeah, I completely get that. I completely get that after. I, I, dare I use the word sabotage, but um, it, it did feel a little bit like that. But um, no, that's good to see, though. The fact that you're releasing two new toolings a year, um, that's quite a big investment for a, for a company. So uh, um, look forward to whatever that may be uh, come 2021. So in terms of, it's not like a Q&A like we did last time. I asked um, our audience, particularly on Instagram and Facebook, around if they got some questions for us. So I've taken three, three of the best ones. Um, so okay. the, the first one is from a, a gentleman called Runak Boy. Oh, sorry, Runak Roy, not Runak Boy. I'm, my, my spelling's terrible. Um, so the, the question he asked is, what is the biggest challenge you have faced leading Calibre Wings? The biggest challenge is uh, having the people around me to understand what I'm trying to achieve. That's the biggest challenge because um, what we're doing is not rocket science. It's just creating a model. And a model is not that difficult. But it is difficult when you are going into the nitty gritties, when you want to make sure that the as somebody famous once said, you know, you want to make sure the back of the, the fence is also painted rather than just the front. So we want to make sure that we want to uh, give our absolute best in terms of our effort to make a product and not the, the feeling of it's, it's, it's okay. It's almost there, right? As uh, um, Chinese people used to, used, used to say, uh, which is uh, almost. So if something that looks almost is good enough, is not good enough for me. So that's the challenge to try to get the people around me to understand that we can't do almost. We want to do exactly and not almost. I, mean, I think that's a great mentality to have, though. Um, but like I said, you know, not I guess not everybody who works in the factory, not everybody who does the painting, not everybody who, who does the distributing has that same passion. So I suppose you, you are the lead, don't you? And you've got to get people to come with you on the bus. I think it's the expression there. But either on the bus or off the bus is a term I always had thrown with me <laughs> at retail. Either you're on the bus or you're yeah. not. And if you aren't, it, I get I get what you mean because you can't do everything. You can't make every single model. You can't put every screw in. You can't apply every layer of paint. You've got to, you know, you're trusting in people to do that to that level. And I guess now with your new factory and the fact that you've got things more in-house, I guess that gives you more, more, sort of, I don't know, more control, I think, of, of where you are and where you're going. 
Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, we are working on Kaizen, like a Japanese term. So we are improving every time. We don't expect to get it right the first time, but at least we are always uh, there to make it better the next time. So that is the commitment level that we are, you know, uh, approaching. Brilliant. Right, so on to the second question. Uh, it's probably one you've had thrown your way many, many times. It's from a guy called False Sensitive uh, over on Instagram. He's asked about the F-22 Raptor. Uh, what are the chances mm -hmm. of Calibre tackling that at some point in the future? Well, um, the Raptor, what can I say? Like the F-35, there's always a demand. Um, and the F-35 and the F-22 are pretty much, to, in my opinion, the same genre. So if we do tackle one, we might tackle the other. The f I, I guess the thing is with the Raptor, there's not really a massive variety of schemes, is there, is it? Because it is literally a one Air Force aircraft. Um, and yep. you sort of, there's only so many levels of grey you can put on. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, and I get, you know, it's a brilliant aircraft. You know, I, I've only seen it once or twice. Um, I know last time I see it was at Flying Legends a few years back when it flew with um, mm -hmm. one of the Mustangs, uh, Miss Helen. Uh, and it's a beautiful right. aircraft. It really is. But I, I, at the moment, I mean, from my point of view, there's only so many grey F-22s a man could want. Um, I, I guess that limits where you go with it because you know once you release one you really want to get that investment back on the tooling don't you but I, I, you know, at the end of the day, it's a great looking aircraft i'm sure there'll be plenty of other schemes coming further down the line so you know potentially i guess will be the answer so no brilliant that's fine and i the third one and this is probably the most prudent one for right now and it's been asked by someone called diecast f14 photography over on instagram right. uh, and this one is how has covid affected your business um, I would say that it has not affected my business because uh, we are in China and I actually made the decision to stay in China uh, when COVID started to, how should you say it, um, erupt. Uh, so I was, in China, <laughs> I, was, I was in China, I was in China, I had a choice, right? I had a choice to be uh, either going back to Singapore or stay put in China. So I did that. I chose the, the latter. I stayed in China. And we only had about a, a month or less than a month of, uh, of quarantine. By that, I meant that I was in China from the, from the early February. And by middle March, I was back in the factory. So had I not been in China and had I chose to go back to Singapore, then I would have not been allowed to enter china because as of now no foreigners are allowed to enter china from what i know right uh so that would have been disastrous because without me at the factory then there will be totally no production going on so as a matter of fact uh COVID did not really affect me per se in terms of uh manufacturing wise but it may have affected in terms of sales wise because um, we don't know how many of our customers or people who are indirectly affected, uh, you know, might re restrain or restrict their hobbies, uh, expenses. So in that sense, that was the best answer. Okay, brilliant. No, it's, I mean, that is, that's massive though. If you think about that, if you had made that decision to go back to Singapore, just imagine where you'd be now, you know, you'd be so behind, it'd be ridiculous. And, yeah, uh, be, <laughs> yeah game over be in real trouble <laughs> yeah no, no well you know that's brilliant now thanks Noel. um look that's about it from me this time um okay. no, thank you very much for doing this you know i really really appreciate it for everything you, you know because of you you know other people are now willing to open up to well, i'll say the fans you know in terms of i say fans but in terms of people who are interested in this and you know because of you and the groundbreaking you know, stuff you're doing you know you're moving the industry on massively and you know it's, it's great to see that you know in in a, in a time where we haven't had lo a lot to look forward to in 2020 well i don't think we've had anything to look forward to to be honest with you but um it's that it's something that's keeping people on their toes and and also from my point of view in terms of the page it's good to see there's more and more people i think joining the hobby as well which is which is great for the hobby going forward 
uh, and hopefully it's reflected in your sales as well. Um, but no, that I really mm -hmm. appreciate it. No, well, thank you for spending time with us, mate. You know, like I said, it's, it's great to have someone like you who's 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 keeping us uh, informed of what's going on in that industry. So, cheers, buddy. I really, really appreciate it. And hopefully we can catch up again before Christmas. All right, sure. Thank you very much oh, for having me. Brilliant. Cheers, guys. Thanks all you. Thanks for all your love, as always, uh, and we'll speak to you soon. All the best. All right. Thank you, Mark. Cheers.